How you doing everyone? I hope you had a fantastic week and welcome to Air Rider and it's time for us to get into another video. This time we're going to have a look at the Tiger 850 Sport and we're going to do a comparison with it with the BMW F800 GS. I recently released this video here and there were a number of you that um, put comments in to say look the Tiger 850 Sport is definitely the bike I would go for. So I thought well let's have a closer look. So in this video, we're going to have a look at some of its features, its technical details, and we'll do a comparison with that. We'll also look at pricing, uh, in particular for Ireland, and then of course I'll give you my verdict at the end. So stick around, I hope you will enjoy the video and hopefully reward me with a like and a comment. So here we go, let's get stuck into it and have a look at the Tiger 850 Sport. Right, what is the Tiger A50 Sport? Well, it's the adventure bike of the Tiger range that's more road focused. What I mean by road focused is obviously it has the tubeless tires with the alloys, and of course it has a certain suspension setup. Obviously we can have a look at the bike, it has that adventure styling, same as the F800 GS. However, obviously the dynamics um, and the, the uh, road handling are superior on it versus the regular adventure model. What sort of specification can we, uh, can we get with this bike? Well, first of all, you're going to get fantastic Brembo um, twin discs on the front. You've got the Mar uh, Marzocchi upside down uh, cartridge forks. You've got a five inch TFT display. You've got two, two riding modes. You've got a all LED lighting um, system, including the daytime running light. It's also got slip and assist clutch, the adjustable screen. It's got ABS and of course, switchable traction control. The standard equipment is fairly high on the BMW F800. You're looking at a six and a half inch TFT display with Bluetooth connectivity, or what they call the BMW uh, connectivity. You've got ABS Pro, dynamic traction control, rain ride modes. Uh, you've got hand protectors, heated grips, LED headlight with daytime running lights, and of course LED indicators, 12 volt with a USB socket, and of course the adjustable brake and clutch levers. Looking at the engine setup here, it's a T-plane triple crank um, 850. And basically what that does is it also gives you outstanding traction uh, at low RPM. Now what the power, uh, the, the power that this engine produces is about 85 brake horsepower at 8,500 RPM. Newton meters not too far behind it, 82 Newton meters at 6,500 RPM. Looking at fuel consumption, you can expect a return of about 5.2 liters per 100. Another thing to note, um, this motorcycle comes with a very large fuel tank at 20 liters, which I think in uh, this um, section of a uh, motorcycle I think is pretty good. Some of the technical information that would be useful is the dry weight of the bike. Um, so that is um, unladen but for fully fueled you're looking at 192 kilograms which I think isn't too bad for this uh, level of motorcycle. You're looking at a seat height of 810 to 830 millimeters and of course that is fully adjustable uh, by 20 millimeters hence the difference. Right, now it's time for the F800 GS. Right, we're going to take a look at the engine. It's a parallel twin. Uh, it's a four-stroke engine, um, four valves per cylinder. It develops 87 brake horsepower. It's about 64 kilowatts at 6750 RPM. The newton meters are 91 newton meters at 6750 RPM. So you're a five emission bike and it's 895 cc. Fuel consumption, you're looking at 4.3 liters per 100. The fuel capacity is a bit disappointing at 15 litres um, versus the 20 litre on the Triumph 850 Sport. The engine is mated with a six-speed gearbox, uh, multi-plate clutch. Looking at the uh, front braking system, it's got a twin 320 mil floating discs. They're obviously Brembo 4 piston caliper. And of course, they have ABS on the front. Single 255 millimetre disc, Brembo single piston. Uh, caliper and of course that's ABS. Looking at the suspension setup on the front you've got the forks there which are four, uh, which are 45 millimeter upside down cartridge forks and they provide about 180 millimeters of suspension travel. Um, on the back uh, you've got the gas pressurized monoshock uh, rear suspension unit uh, that has manual uh, adjustable preload and that allows 170 millimeters of rear tra uh, suspension travel. Um, so again, that is still pretty good for a more road sporty oriented motorcycle. The bike has 19 inch wheels on the front and 17 inch uh, wheels a wheel on the back. Um, pretty much the same as the Tiger 850. You've got twin um, twin discs, um, 305 mil, uh, twin twin piston floating caliper, and then of course you've got 265 millimeter single disc single um, 
caliper on the rear. Looking at the suspension setup on the F800GS, telescopic 41 millimeter forks on the front, and that will give you about 170 millimeters of suspension travel. And then the rear, you've got aluminium twin-sided swing arm, central spring strut reband dampening adjustment, and that'll give you 170 millimeters on the rear as well. So again, you've got that more road-oriented adventure bike, um, mainly due with the 19-inch front and the 17-inch rear. Um, again, tubeless with the with the aluminium rims uh, as well. Some additional um, technical details: the unladen weight, uh, fully fueled, is 227 kilograms, which is enormous in comparison to the Tiger A50 Sport. So a significantly heavier bike. Um, also, you've got seat height at 815 millimeters, and of course, uh, you can get a lowering uh, seat, whereas the Tiger does give you some adjustment um, as standard. You'd have to get a completely different seat on the BMW F800 uh, GS. Looking at the headlamp unit, you've got all LED lighting. So what that means is you've got LED um, tail lights, you've got an LED headlight with a daytime running light. And of course, you've also got the LED side lights or indicators as well. Now, apparently this is market specific, so it depends on which market you're currently in that might change. Looking at some of the electronics, the bike features two ride modes. So you've got a rain and, and road uh, setting, obviously that can be adjusted. That also comes with a switchable traction control unit um, and that can be deactivated independently via the instrument menus. Looking at the electronics, the bike does come with a two riding modes, which is rain and road, obviously similar to the 850 Sport, and of course also has dynamic traction control. The Tiger A50 Sport also features a five inch TFT display. However, there is no connectivity, which is a bit disappointing. But overall, it looks very attractive. Um, it seems to be very uh, good in all lighting conditions. So I suppose from that perspective, you'll be able to see uh, all the necessary information. And of course you can access uh, the menus as well, uh, in particular for the traction control unit. Right, we come to pricing now. The Tiger A50 Sport in Ireland is priced at 13,850. Now that's basically for a very well put together bike. You've got a, a great engine with it. Um, you've got great stopping power, great suspension systems. Uh, the quality of the bike certainly is um, fantastic. Um, it's got a lot of history. Um, Triumph was founded in 1885, so they've got a great history of making motorcycles. Um, can you justify the price difference of 900 euros more over the BMW 800 GS? I don't know, because in some areas the bike falls short, like for instance, no connectivity with the TFT display, whereas the BMW offers that. Um, heated uh, hand grips are standard on the BMW, but they're not standard on the Triumph. So I suppose when you are going to consider the price range on this bike, you are basically going for more uh, more dynamics, um, a great engine, uh, great build quality, not necessarily all the frills that most modern bikes come with these days. Um, yeah, sure, it has got um, some uh, electronics as well. You've got the different ride modes and the traction control. So it'll be purely down to um, the individual that's looking at this bike. I think to me, build quality is one, the engine's great, suspension setup's great, um, and I'm in no doubt that it's going to be popular with a lot of people. Right, we're going to look at pricing now. So the F800 GS comes in at €12,950 in Ireland. Now for that, you get a very well spec bike, you're getting a great engine, that 895cc engine. Um, and overall, the package is really good. It really offers really good value for money. I'm certainly not uh, detracting from that. The price difference between the two bikes is about 900 euros. And this is going to lead into my verdict. So, you know, justifying the two, the BMW is the cheaper bike. And of course, the Tiger A50, the more expensive. The BMW offers more equipment for that price range as well. Whereas the, BMW, uh, the Tiger doesn't offer the same level of his equipment or functionality as the BMW does. Right, but coming to the verdict, you know, the BMW really is a great bike and I'm, I'm not uh, taking away from that. It's very well priced, it comes very well equipped. Um, you know, it's got a cracking engine, that 895cc, um, but it does fall short in some areas that the Tiger 850 Sport shines. I mean, one, that uh, suspension setup on the Tiger is just fantastic. It's really excellent quality. 43 millimeter um, forks that give you really good um, 
suspension travel yes the suspension travels are very similar but i just think that the bmw f800 gs suspension system is just too basic um you're going to get a far more dynamic um far more sporty ride on the tiger 850 sport just based on that alone um, another good thing on the tiger is the bigger fuel tank that 20 liter fuel tank is going to make such a difference when you're when you're traveling an extra five liters you could put it down to an extra 100 kilometers to a tank and um, it just means you're going to stop less you're going to be able to enjoy your ride more um, another good quality in on this bike is the chassis man 192 kilograms of weight versus 227 that is going to make a detrimental effect on how the bike handles and feels on the road and i just think they've done very well here tiger a50 sport because you're my choice in this comparison congratulations really top notch for the extra money that you're going to pay you're getting a far more dynamic bike uh, than the f800 gs so well done tiger and guys thank you so very much for joining me on this video i hope you've enjoyed it and i hope you'll return me with a, a like and a comment Thanks so very much, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.